Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our service this morning. It is great to see you all, and it's great to be here with you all. It's really good to see some people who haven't been with us here in the building back again. Welcome to you, um, and hopefully we can all get used to kind of how we're having to do things at the moment. And welcome to you if you're joining us on Zoom or watching this later on YouTube. It is great that we can come together and worship together. On a practical note, as always, please can you um, just fill in the track and trace forms and leave them and the pens in your pew. They'll be collected afterwards. Um, and as we move around the building during the service, um, please do uh, just be aware of each other's space as we do this. We will be sharing communion as part of this service, as today uh, we remember the, uh, the remembrance of Corpus Christi, the institution of Holy Communion. And so we'll be celebrating Holy Communion together as we give thanks for that as part of our spiritual lives. And we'll be finishing our service outdoors uh, so that we can sing together. It is coming up to wedding season now that weddings are uh, happening in a, in a slightly bigger way again. So I have some bands to publish. It's getting slightly easier this week. It's just second and uh, third and second times. Uh, so here we go. I publish the bands of marriage between Andrew Warren Johnson of this parish and Laura Ann Sharples also of this parish. And this is for the third time of asking. Also between Joshua Ryan Peter Kane of uh, St. Mary's Wallasey and Kelly Louise Dawson of this parish. And this is for the second time of asking. If any of you know any reason in law why these persons may not marry each other, you are to declare it now. Brilliant. Let's pray for these couples as they move towards their wedding day. Lord, we thank you that you are a God of love and we thank you for the love that Andrew and Laura share for each other and that Josh and Kelly share for each other as they move towards their wedding day and as they move into their married life together, would your presence with them cement and deepen their love for each other and may they grow in their knowledge of and love for you as they know you walking with them each day of their lives. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. In a moment, we're going to join together in some opening responses that remind us of God's love for us and of God's welcome to each one of us as we come together as his family in this place this morning. And just to say, because I forgot to say earlier, hello to everyone in our family room also. Great to see you in there. And I know they are already getting on with some of the activities that are going on in there. Brilliant. And so we're going to join together in some words of gathering, which will come up on our screen. And so if you would join in with the words in bold print, and you get to lead this morning. And so we say together, we are chosen by the King of Kings. You are loved with an everlasting love, not for our looks, though he sees you as beautiful, not for our good works, though he cherishes every gift you give back to him, not because we're strong, because his power is perfect in your weakness. We belong in the family of God. You are loved by your heavenly Father. Amen. It's great to know, isn't it, that we are loved by God. We are part of his family, and so we are all each other's family. What a great thing. Do you know, this morning, as I was uh, just finish off printing some of these bits and pieces for uh, the service, a little voice was wandering around our house singing, uh, singing Come By Ya. And you know, I thought, well, interesting you should say ah, because actually that song has got this kind of, Oh, isn't that lovely? Sit around the campfire and hold hands and sing it kind of 
meaning to it now, but actually what does come by Yah mean? It means, Lord, come by here. Come here. People are suffering, Lord, come here. People are praying, Lord, come here. Come and be in that place where people need you. And it struck me that was a really powerful song to be going around our house this morning, leaving beside how it's been kind of ruined a bit by its reputation. That cry of, come by here. Sounds a bit Welsh, isn't it? Come by here. Um, <laughs> come by here, Lord. And do you know what, what a great prayer for this morning? We're not going to sing it now. But whatever we're bringing into this, whether we want to say, Lord, I'm just praying because I've got to the end of me, or Lord, I know there are people who are suffering, or whatever it is, Lord, come by here. Come and be here this morning. We're going to sing our first song now. And it, 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 in a sense, it picks up on this. Let the king of my heart be the mountain where I run, the fountain I drink from. Lord, you are what I need. And so please come and be here because you are good and I need your goodness with me. So if we're here in the building, as always, we can't sing, but please do uh, join in if you're on Zoom or watching this later. And, but let's stand if you're able to and if you'd like to as we worship God with this first song, Let the King of My Heart.
Thanks to those in our family room for some great musical accompaniment to that. But you know, what a, what a great way for us to remind ourselves and begin that God is good, just good. And that he is never going to let us down. Whatever we bring with us today, whatever's going on, God will not let us down. He is the king of our heart. We're aware in that, that while God may not let us down, there are times that we have let God down in how we have been, in how we've been with others, in how we've been in, this, in, this, in the silence, in how we've spoken, in how we've ignored. And so we take this moment in our service to bring before God those things we know in our lives that just need his goodness to come in and to continue to change and make us more like Jesus as we confess our sins before God and receive the assurance of his forgiveness. And so let's take a moment of quiet as we bring ourselves before God. And so we join together in our prayer of confession as it comes up on the screen. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And so may the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. And so mindful of our need for God's grace in our lives, let's join together in the collect for today. And so we pray. O oh God, the strength of all those who put their trust in you, mercifully accept our prayers. And because through the weakness of our mortal nature, we can do no good thing without you, Grant us the help of your grace, that in the keeping of your commandments, we may please you both in will and deed, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We're going to have our two Bible readings now as we turn to look at God's word together. And so I'm going to invite Debs to come forward to read us our first reading, our gospel reading from Mark chapter 3. Right. Mark 3, 20 end. Then Jesus ended, entered a house, and again a crowd gathered so that uh, E.B. Is, and his disciples were not even able to eat. When the family heard about this, they went to take charge of him. For uh, they said, he is out of his mind. And the teachers of the law who came down from Jerusalem said, he is possessed by Baritzabil, yeah, uh, by the prince of demons, he's driving out demons. So Jesus called them over to him, and he began to speak to them in uh, par parables. How can Satan drive out Satan? His kingdom uh, if a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. 
If a house is divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And if Satan opposes himself and is divided, he cannot stand. His end has come. In fact, no one can enter a strong man's house without first tying him all up. Then he can plunder the strong man's house. Truly, I tell you, people can be forgiven all their sins and every slander they utter. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will never be forgotten. They are guilty of an eternal sin. He said this because they were saying he has an uh, impaired spirit. Then Jesus' mother and brothers arrived. Standing outside, they sent someone in to call him. A crowd was sitting round him, and they told him, Your mother and brothers are outside looking for you. Whom are my mother and my brothers, he asked. Then he looked at those seated in a circle round him and said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does God's will is my brother and sister and mother. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading this morning is from Romans chapter 9, verses 1 to 13. I speak the truth in Christ. I'm not lying. My conscience confirms it through the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were cursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my people, those of my own race, the people of Israel. Theirs is the adoption to sonship. Theirs, the divine glory, the covenants, the receiving of the law, the temple worship and the promises. Theirs are the patriarchs. And from them is traced the human ancestry of the Messiah, who is God over all forever praised. Amen. It is not as though God's word had failed. For not all who are descended from Israel are Israel, nor because they are his descendants are they all Abraham's children. On the contrary, it is through Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned. In other words, it is not the children by physical descent who are God's children, but it is the children of the promise who are regarded as Abraham's offspring. For this was how the promise was stated. At the appointed time, I will return, and Sarah will have a son. Not only that, but Rebekah's children were conceived at the same time by our father Isaac. Yet, before the twins were born or had done anything good or bad, in order that God's purpose in election might stand, not by works, but by him who calls, she was told, the older will serve the younger, just as it is written. Jacob I loved, but Esau I hated. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Praise be to God. And so now I am delighted to hand over to Nigel to open up God's word for us. You may have noticed that Nigel hasn't been uh, preaching of late, and this is nothing of a reflection on Nigel's preaching, but simply because in order to, to preach and minister in this church, Nigel has to have a license. 
And there was a bit of an administrative mix up for many people in Nigel's position actually in this diocese, uh, which unfortunately meant that he hasn't had his license and been able to preach. But now I am happy to say fully licensed <laughs> with all permission to drive a sermon. Nigel, please, could you come and open up God's word for us? Thank, Thank you. you. Well, they talk about having a dog collar. Did you know that we also have to have a license too? <laughs> Let us pray. Lord, speak to us this morning through your word that we, our hearts may be touched and our lives open to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. If you were here last week or listening, you will heard, we would have heard how Nicodemus tried to work out what Jesus meant by saying, being born again. And Jesus explained that it is the Holy Spirit who brings us by adoption into God's family. So we become, as it were, co-inheritors with Jesus of all the Father's riches. For the first six months of my life, I lived in an orphanage near London. Then a childless couple took me and gave me a new name and identity. I became their son, and I shared in all that they had. And my parents introduced me to Jesus. And so at the age of seven, I was adopted into God's family. I acquired yet another new identity as a child of God. I was not Nigel Shibild for the first six months of my life. I actually had another name. Neither was I a full and permanent member of God's family until the age of seven, despite having been baptized as a child, as a baby. So how do we become part of God's family? We read in Mark chapter 3, verses 34 and 35, Jesus looked around at those seated in the circle and said, here is my mother and brothers. Whoever does God's will is my brother and sister and mother. So let's take a look at Jesus' relationships. First, Jesus and his family. Secondly, Jesus and the religious leaders. And thirdly, Jesus and Satan. First then, Jesus and his family. As far as we know, Jesus had a traditional and secure upbringing. Certainly in his early years, there was a threat against his life, which resulted in an escape by the family to Egypt. There was also that time his parents thought they'd lost him when he was in discussion with the temple theologians. Otherwise, it seems that he lived at home and contributed to family life. At about the age of 30, we read in Mark chapter 1 and verses 9 to 11 that Jesus was baptized by his cousin John. And the Holy Spirit came visibly upon him, and God the Father spoke, You are my Son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. Now, we actually don't know if his family knew what happened at his baptism. But Mark chapter 3, verses 20 and 21, we heard read, Then Jesus entered a house, and again a crowd gathered, so that he and his disciples are not even able to eat. And when his firm family heard about this, they went to take charge of him. For they said, he is out of his mind. Wow, what a thing to say about a family member. Jesus' earthly family's expectations were actually in conflict with his calling from God. 
And this is a dilemma which Christians have faced down the ages. Jesus loved his mother and brothers, but he did not let them come between him and his heavenly Father. When we follow Jesus, it can bring misunderstanding and opposition from our nearest and dearest. And if you feel torn between loyalty to God's family and your earthly family, who will you put first in your life? But secondly, Jesus and the religious leaders, Mark chapter 3, verse 21, the teachers of the law who came down from Jerusalem said, he's possessed by Beelzebub, by the prince of demons who's driving out demons. Now these teachers may have actually been the ones with whom Jesus engaged in the temple about 20 years earlier. Beelzebub was the name given to a principal demon, indeed to Satan himself. So why did the religious leaders announce to the crowd that Jesus was possessed by a demon? It seems that they'd become obsessed with the outward form of religion. They'd added complex rules of how the law should be kept. And the religious leaders had sort of lost sight that the purpose of the law was actually to guide people into a living relationship with God. And so when they heard that Jesus was casting out evil spirits, they could not and would not believe that God was at work. So the only conclusion they came to was that Jesus was an agent of Satan. And Jesus showed the absurdity of their claim by pointing out that Satan was unlikely to undermine his own work. Now, we can be tempted to develop rules and practices which we believe will earn favor with God. It appeals to human pride if we can achieve our own salvation. It's possible to attend church, give generously, serve on the PCC, care for the poor, without being in God's family. In the letter to the Romans, chapter 9 and verse 16, Paul wrote about belonging to God's family as follows. He said, It does not, therefore, depend on a person's desire or effort, but on God's mercy. Have you experienced God's mercy through the work of his Holy Spirit, bringing you by adoption into the family of God? Can you and I describe and sense God as our Father? But thirdly, we come to Jesus and Satan. Mark chapter 3, verse 27, Jesus told the religious leaders, no one can enter a strong man's house and carry off his possessions unless he first ties up the strong man. Then he can rob his house. We read in, uh, we read in Mark chapter 1 that immediately after his baptism, Jesus went into the desert to be tempted by Satan. Not long after that encounter, we read that Jesus started driving out evil spirits from people. So far from being possessed by a demon, Jesus actually had invaded Satan's territory and he robbed the devil of people that he had enslaved. This assault on Satan continued right through Jesus' ministry and culminated in the defeat of the devil and his demonic hordes on the cross. In Paul's day, when a territory was conquered, the invaders used to chain together all the defeated leading citizens and then process them publicly to display their victory. 
And in the letter to the Colossians church, chapter 2 and verse 15, Paul used this custom to explain why we did not need to fear demonic powers. Because Paul wrote that, Jesus disarmed the powers and authorities. He made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. Now, why is this important to note? Paul wrote to the Ephesian church in chapter 6 and verse 12, our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realm. When we belong to God's family, you and I have access to resources to win the spiritual battle through the Holy Spirit. So what about Jesus, you and me? We see from this passage that having a genetic link to Jesus did not guarantee inclusion in God's family. Being brought up in a Christian family can have its, its advantages as I experienced. But I still had to personally respond to God's call to follow Jesus. We also see that serving in the church, either in ordained ministry or as a lay person, does not give entry into God's family. Jesus was clear that the true members of his family will share his commitment to do God's will. We will learn what God's will is as the Holy Spirit teaches us from the Bible. But what if you fear you may have blasphemed against the Holy Spirit? Remember, remember we read in Mark chapter 3, verse 29, Jesus said, whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will never be forgiven. He is guilty of an eternal sin. Now, this remark was aimed at the religious leaders who actually saw God at work and claimed it was the devil's doing. They had so hardened their hearts against God that they'd actually put themselves beyond the possibility of redemption. If any of us seek God, we will find him, whatever we may have done and said in the past. Paul wrote in Romans chapter 10, verse 9, if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, listen to this, you will be saved. Are you saved? I know we joke about this phrase, but am I, are you a member of God's family, sharing with Jesus and filled with the Holy Spirit. If you are, you are saved. But if you have any uncertainties about that, do speak to Paul or myself today before you leave this place. Let us pray. Lord, it's amazing that you invite us to be members of your family. You call us in. You want to adopt us as your daughters and sons. Help us today to be members of your family. Reassure us of your love. Pour your Holy Spirit upon us, we ask and pray. And if we have any doubts, Lord, give us the courage to express those and to seek you, knowing that we will find you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Thank you very much, Nigel, for sharing that with us and for the challenge of that. We began this service, didn't we, by beginning with that, that statement, we belong in the family of God. And that is where we all belong. That is our natural place as adopted children of God.
But actually, do we know that that is where we today belong? And so sit with that. What do we need to do about that today? And just echo Nigel's words in that. We're going to join together in an affirmation of faith now that enables us to respond to this in some way as we join together in the creed, as we declare, this is what I believe. This is who I believe God is and who God is towards me. And so if I can invite you, if you're able to stand as we join together in the words of the creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. If you'd like to be seated, Laura is now going to come and lead us in our time of prayer. Let us pray to God the Father, who has reconciled all things to himself in Christ. For peace among the nations, that God may rid the world of violence and let peoples grow in justice and harmony. And we pray particularly that you would bless all the efforts at, at cooperation towards the treatment and vaccination against coronavirus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. For those who serve in public office, that they may work for the common good. And we pray especially for our MP Mick and for all our local councillors working for the people of Birkenhead. We ask you to fill them with your wisdom and love for the people here and give them energy as they work to help our community flourish. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. For Christian people everywhere, that we may joyfully proclaim and live our faith in Jesus Christ, especially for Mark, our bishop, and Julie and Samuel as they prepare to join him, for our vicar Paul, our curate Debbie, our community and family worker Denise and trainee Lauren, and all who support this church as volunteers, funders, and members near and far off, that you might bless our work and reveal your kingdom to us more and more. And we pray particularly for the Oak Community Project as it reopens, that it will be safe and harmonious, blessed with your presence and serve our community here well. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those who suffer from hunger, sickness or loneliness, that the presence of Christ may bring them health and wholeness. And in a moment of quiet, we name before God those for whom we particularly wish to pray. Father, we ask you to bless them by your spirit, that they may experience your presence and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Let us commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of God. Merciful Father, accept, accept these, these prayers, prayers for the, for the sake, sake of your Son, our, our Saviour, Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen.
All right, the bishop breaks it every time he comes as well. <laughs> That's why we use it, isn't it? <laughs> Just before we uh, share the piece together to lead us into our time of communion, I'm aware that there's been lots going on in the family room as well that we haven't been able to see or hear, apart from the music. We're going to do it after communion. Okay. <laughs> okay. They're not quite ready yet. So we're going to hold on to that and we're going to hear from them after communion. Okay. And before we head outside. And so let's take this opportunity to share the peace together as we come together to uh, figuratively gather around God's table. We can't do it physically at the moment, can we? But we can do that figuratively. So let's uh, just remember that we are the body of Christ. In the one spirit, we were all baptized into one body. And so let us then pursue all that makes for peace and that builds up our common life together. And so we're going to share the peace. We can say peace be with us to each other, but we can't go and shake hands and everything like that. So we'll use the signs as we have been doing. We'll say peace be with you. And so would you like to stand as we remember God's gift of peace to us and that we give that peace to each other as we say peace be with you. And so let's share with one another a sign of that peace. Peace be with you. And so we come to share bread and wine together. We join in a prayer of thanksgiving, Eucharist. Thanksgiving for all that God has done. Isaac may rejoin us at some point. But we, we give thanks. We give thanks that we are invited back into God's family through adoption. We remember all that Christ has done for us in giving of himself on the cross for our redemption. This isn't something we can do of ourselves. This is a gift of God. And we join together to celebrate that gift and to give ourselves back as we receive from God. And so if you join in with the words in bold print, as we say, the Lord is here, his spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. If you'd like to sit or kneel as we pray. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love, you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ, you shared our life, that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of the supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, Send your Holy Spirit, that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. 
with your whole church throughout the world. We offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. And so together we pray as our Saviour taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy upon us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, grant us peace. And so we join together in the prayer after communion. All praise to you, our God and Father, for you have fed us with the bread of heaven and quenched our thirst from the true vine. Hear our prayer that, being grafted into Christ, we may grow together in unity and feast with him in his kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so before we move outside, we're just going to, if they're ready, to come out and show us what they have been getting on with in the family room today. Wow. Look at this. Do you want to, Eve, do you want to bring that out front? And we can see what you have been doing. Okay. Wow. So Eve, can you tell us a little, oh, hang on, let's wait for Emily and Nuno to come out as well. Okay. So who would like to begin telling us what you, oh, there you go. Okay, your time will come, Emily, it's okay. Eve, what have you been doing? So the eyes of people that we've lost that they're looking down from us and that one with the eyes there is a man who's a bit bored at looking down at us. Okay, who else have we got on the, Emily, can you tell us who we've got on the leaves? Because you've got, a, it looks like a tree you've got here with lots of leaves on. Because you've got lots of names on here, haven't you? Yeah. Okay, so who have you got on some of your leaves, Emily? I have the Estonian family, the Portugal family, and the Bournemouth family. Wow. And the Spore family, the Church family, and us. Wow, so you've got all your different families you're part of in Estonia, Portugal, Bournemouth, uh, then church family, school family, and your family at home. Isn't that amazing? But what brings them all together? What's on both your tree trunks is the, the person of Jesus in whom we all, doesn't matter what biological family we're part of, actually it's Jesus that brings us together into our eternal heavenly family as part of the kingdom of God, isn't it? They are brilliant. And you've also, who have you got on there? So, this is my coat of arms. And the, Thanks, Aiki. And there are things that you need to remember. Brilliant. So, your coat of arms has on it a... So, the crown is to be loyal. The heart is to love. The, the cross is to remember Jesus. And the, e, and the eagle, I mean the dog, is the sign of the Holy Spirit. Amazing. Wow, that is brilliant. Thank you. So there's some really good things to actually remember on that. So go and have a look at Eve's um, 
shield. What's a coat of arms? Coat of arms, that's the one after the service. Brilliant. You're going to put them up in there so that they can be viewed by all. That is brilliant. Thank you so much. Who is in our family? Who is in our family and what makes us a true family? What makes us God's family? And also, I got a, uh, a new wristband from Isaac. So there you go. Everyone's a winner. Uh, just very briefly in our notices, just to say we will be having morning prayer and evening prayer this week, Monday, nine o'clock in the morning, Thursday, half past seven in the evening. Um, as Laura mentioned in our prayers, um, the Oak Community Project, our Tuesday and Wednesday hub will be opening this week. I believe that, that makes it for a very nice relaxed week with not all that much to do, Denise, is that right? Um, so, but, you know, please just hold those reopenings Tuesday and Wednesday in your prayers. We also have some uh, visitors coming along on Tuesday um, to, to look at our project and all that is going on there. So please uh, do just hold Denise, all of the volunteers, and that whole thing in your prayers as we come together so that we can do that safely and in a way that enables us to give hospitality in this place and really connect with those people with whom we have been connected but at distance for a long time. Um, and as part of that, can I just say a big thank you to everyone and anyone who has been involved in sorting and moving and carrying and painting and cleaning and all of those other tasks without which we couldn't be reopening as we are. So thank you to everybody who's been involved in that. And just a final reminder that uh, a week on Saturday, Saturday the 19th of June at five o'clock in the evening will be Debbie's priesting. Okay, where Debbie will be ordained priest. And then on Sunday the 20th, uh, Debbie will be celebrating communion with us here, leading us in that. So that's a really big moment in Debbie's journey. Um, and so... We won't all be able to attend the cathedral service, unfortunately. Numbers are very limited, but there will be the facility to watch it online and we can come together on the Sunday morning to celebrate with Debbie. Um, so that's Saturday the 19th at five o'clock. We do have, I believe, one birthday this week, uh, which is, my watch tells me that tomorrow is Bina's birthday. Um, is there anyone else? No. Nope. Okay, so we've got one, we'll, but we'll save that for later in our service. But Bina, just to say, because I'm not sure how well people are able to connect once we're outside. Bina, just to say a very happy birthday to you. We can't sing at you and we will um, hope you have a wonderful, wonderful time. Okay, great stuff. In which case we are now, oh, there, there's Bina. There you are. Hello. And a very happy birthday to you for, uh, for tomorrow. Hope you have a great day. Real, because in technology, wonderful. Real. Okay, folks, I think we are nearly all out here now. Um, so just mindful of the fact that today we have been thinking about our welcome into God's family, that we give ourselves back to God in that. We've been celebrating communion together, remembering God's greatest gift to us of himself in Jesus on the cross. We're going to sing two songs as we come uh, out here. We're going to sing our first song, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross, that gives us the chance to say, well, this is my response. Do you know, were the whole realm of nature mine, that would be a present far too small. This love demands my soul, my life, my all. That's our response to God. And then our second song, How Great Thou Art, gives us the chance to respond to God and to speak to God with words of praise and thanksgiving to him. And so we'll sing these two songs together before we close with our words of blessing. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
Christ my God. Oh, the loving grace that shall on me most, I sacrifice them to all his love.
just sounding really beautiful and isn't it great to hear each other's voices as we sing to God together. Let's close with our words of blessing. If you want to just respond with amen to each of these prayers then please do feel free to do that. May God the Father who fed his children with manna in the wilderness strengthen you in your pilgrimage to the promised land. Amen. May God the Son who gave his flesh for food and his blood for drink, keep you in eternal life and raise you up on the last day. Amen. May God, the Holy Spirit, who leads us into all truth, help you discern the Lord's body and empower you to proclaim his death until he comes. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you all this day and always. Amen. And so, go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you all so much for joining with us. We've got the sun again. Have a great week ahead and we'll see you soon.